Hello, my name is Dr. James McCarthy and I'm chair of the Division of Nephrology and Hypertension here at Mayo Clinic in Rochester. In our article in the Mayo Clinic Proceedings regarding the use of biomedical system dynamics to control anemia, practitioners should be aware that this is an important development in the management of patients not only with anemia but may have other far-ranging implications. Back in 2007, we noticed that many of our patients on dialysis receiving darbapoietin had hemoglobin levels higher than we desired. At that point in time, the FDA and other practitioners were noting that high hemoglobins were not good for patients on dialysis. One of the difficulties, though, is when the medication is administered, its effects can linger for up to 60 to 100 days. So we decided we had to have a much better way to adjust the medication dosage to achieve the hemoglobin we wanted to get. We took an entirely new approach that's not previously been used. We used the principle of biomedical system dynamics. This relies upon the physiology of red blood cell production and utilizes patient response to the medication to give the practitioner the optimal dose to get the hemoglobin desired. So let me describe it for you. We put the elements in there of erythropoiesis. So we have the stem cells that differentiate into red cell precursors. The red cell precursors mature into reticulocytes. Reticulocytes then become mature red blood cells some of which can be lost during dialysis and also then they have a limited lifespan of 60 to 100 days. When darbapoietin is administered, it stimulates this process. The degree to which it stimulates each of these steps is different from person to person. So once we have the parameters set, and this is gleaned from the medical literature, so we know the time span and percentages for each of these physiologic variables. We then take information from the patient. So we administer the drug and then check the hemoglobin one week later. When we do six of these cycles so that we individualize the pa those five physiologic parameters, we can then predict with 95% accuracy what dosage is going to be necessary of the medication to achieve the desired hemoglobin. When we introduced this into our dialysis unit in 2009, we were able to decrease the dosage of darbapoietin by 50% in our patients. In addition to the dosage decrease, we saw marked improvement in hemoglobin control in that patients no longer had hemoglobins that were higher than we desired, but we also saw fewer patients with hemoglobins lower than desired. So we were able to move the patients to the desired hemoglobin while reducing the dosage. Another benefit of this, we didn't see hemoglobin cycling. And this is the phenomenon in which the erythropoietic agent, in this case darbapoietin, is administered. Then the next hemoglobin value is not as high as desired, so the practitioner will be tempted to increase the dosage of the medication to try and get the desired effect. This may happen for several weeks in a row, and then the hemoglobin begins to rise rapidly. Therefore, the medicine would ordinarily be interrupted under prior protocols, and then sooner or later we see the hemoglobin drop below the desired level. So hemoglobin tends to cycle higher and lower than desired. In looking at adverse effects of erythropoietic agents, it's becoming more apparent that high dosages of these agents in the presence of high hemoglobin levels is deleterious to patients in that there are more cardiovascular events. Also, cycling the hemoglobin levels up higher than desired or lower than desired also is associated with more cardiovascular events. Therefore, any way that we can use this medicine to achieve the desired hemoglobin 
while avoiding overshoot and undershoot and using the minimum effective dose, we anticipate will have benefits on our patients. We took this new approach as described here. We decreased the dosage by 50% and we had less hemoglobin cycling. We're excited about this new principle because it not only allows us to predict the dosage, but we also know that if the, dose, the hemoglobin is not as predicted by the model, we know that something has changed in the patient. There may be an intercurrent illness, there may be some other impact or factor that has affected the patient's ability to respond to the erythropoietic agent. This now gives the clinician a warning that they need to go to the bedside and check the patient for what has changed. So this is giving us advanced warning of entering intercurrent illnesses in our patients so that we go to focus our attention. Then, because this is an individualized program, we can rerun the patient's data through this system and give us the new dosage of this medicine based on the patient's current condition to achieve the desired hemoglobin. We were able to do this quite rapidly and in fact when we changed our desired level of hemoglobin from the range of 10 to 13 down to the range of 10 to 12, quite literally within two days we were able to rewrite darbopoietin prescriptions for over 350 patients implement the new dosage to achieve the new target hemoglobin. We are very excited about this development. This is an excellent example of individualized medicine. We start with basic physiologic parameters. We put in the individual patient response to a medication. And then we can, in addition, choose the individual hemoglobin level desired for that patient and come up with the optimum dosage. We feel that if this were extended throughout the United States, we could potentially save billions of dollars in our healthcare system. This is because the erythropoietic agents used to treat dialysis patients account for a large portion of the federal budget to support these patients. This observations will also extend to patients who require these drugs that are not on dialysis. So we can foresee patients with chronic kidney disease that are not yet on dialysis that use these, could use this system. Other patients using erythropoietic agents, for example, with hematologic problems or others, we could also use the same things because the same principles of erythropoiesis will apply to all of these populations. We have continued to utilize this program and even under newer reimbursement methods from the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Studies, we are still seeing a continued decline in our dosage and a maintenance of the desired hemoglobin levels. This not only has implications for maintaining hemoglobin levels, which helps our patients to feel better, but we also use the minimum effective dosage and we avoid the use of blood transfusions which can sensitize these patients, making kidney transplant less successful or even impossible in some patients. So we see that there are far-ranging benefits to the use of a new technology based upon physiologic parameters. So we are quite excited about this, and we would hope that the readers will take the chance to review the article and contact us with any questions. Thank you very much. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www.mayocliniceproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.com. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.